Hello everyone, welcome back to your Netcode Hub channel. I am Frederick and I'm happy to have you here today. In this video, we are going to look at how to use QuickGrade in your .NET 8 Blazor application. QuickGrade has been in existence, I think from version 7.06.0, but in that release, it was in the experimental mode. Now with the new release of .NET 8, Blazor Quick Grade component it is no longer experimental and it is now part of the Blazor framework in .NET 8. Quick Grade it is high performance grade component for displaying t data in a tabular form. Quick Grade it built to be a simple and also convenient way to display your data, while it also provides some powerful features such as sorting, filtering paging and virtualization. We are going to have a look on how to use this nice component in our Blazor application. So like this video to help this channel grow and also provide training for those who are interested in uh, Blazor server, Blazor web assembly for web app development, Mari and Mari Blazor hybrid for mobile development and also web service that's for .NET web API. So I have an email at the video description, so you can write to me through it. When we are done with this project, I'll put it at the GitHub. So check the video description as well, and you're going to have the link to clone the project. All right, so let's see. Now this is what you are going to um, look today. This is just quick grid. I have just a form on top over here, and here I can see I have these columns in here. Now I can just perform CRUD operations with it by creating, reading, updating, and now deleting data from it. I also have um, pagination. It also supports a filtering, so you can filter it on any column. Now let's have a look here with an example. So you can see we have this with a pages of out of two. We can add one, uh, person one. We can just add the date and save it. Now, because see we have seven items. Now, when you go back to the last one, we have it over here. You can also edit this because we have it over here and I can um, just make it 10. I can change the date of bet here to 19, 1994, save it, and I have it 10, 994 is over here. I can delete it as well. You see, it is now out. If I want to make a search, is it possible? Yes, it is. Click on this and I can search through this column. So let's search for fr and now we see we have all the frs here let's search for um something like es and we have nothing in here you see there's nothing and um we can just search for any other stuff and as soon as we close this you're going to have the whole list of the data back again okay so that is a way to use a quick grid is not nice yes it is now let's have a look. So let's jump right into the Visual Studio and see how to integrate this into your application. So I have to close this. Now let's go in there and I'll create a new project. So file, new project. And you're gonna create, we're gonna use a Blazor standalone project here, but it cuts across. You can use for Blazor server and also WebAssembly or even the, the new, that's a Blazor web app, okay? But for now, let's use this for this demo purpose so the name is demo.net 8 blazer quick grid so now let's let's create it so after the project has created successfully the very first thing that we're going to do here is to install the quick grid nuget package and we can find that from microsoft.asp.net.core.component.quickgrid so let's get that done. We can do that from the solution. Right click on dependencies and I'll go to manage NuGet packages. And from the search option, let's just paste it here. That is this one. So type in this and then this is what you're looking for, this guy. Now let's save it. Make sure here it is a the stable version here, that's what 8.0. Let's save it. All right, so this is done. Now we can close this peacefully. Let's go to the home component. That is what you're gonna have all our work in here, okay? 
So let's clear everything that you see. First of all, let me increase the size. Okay. I believe it is okay. Let me clear this. We have the route specified already. So that is it. Now let's create our model. So we can create the model maybe in a, a class file and I keep it here. But since I'm going to use it as a demo purpose, maybe let's put the model down here. So I'm going to say code. Let's open the block. And our base here, let's have this model. There isn't a class here, that's for a person. You can use for an, a product, anything at all that it comes to your mind. You can use it, okay? So we have our class here. Let me put it down, that's right. And it has three properties, ID, um, name, and also date of birth. Okay, let's save that. Now the next thing I'm gonna do here is, when you use the um, quick grade, it must be bound to a list. But this list is not gonna be the normal list that we know. It's gonna be an I queryable of, of the model, this, this model, okay? So we have to create it and initialize to empty. So that is it, we have to create and initialize it. So this is just the name that I have given to mine. So that's a person's queryable. And you can see we are initializing it to empty. And it has this dot as queryable um, to it. So maybe you'll be asking yourself, what does I queryable mean? Or what is it? As soon as it has this I, it tells you that it is an interface. Okay. So it is an interface that is part of the link. That is a language integrated query framework. Now it is specifically designed for building and executing queries against data source. So with this interface that we have, it will be very difficult for us to add this list to this interface. So what we're going to do here is, in order for us to have a model set, you know, we're going to use an edit component. So this edit form needs a model and that model must be initialized. So we're going to create um, a list of this, this model that we're going to use to assign for our edit form. When we choose the data, we are going to convert it to a list so we can add it to this variable um object that we have here all right let's have a look with this now the first thing that we're going to do here is we, we are creating our objects and that is the object you know we have this person as person and that is an object over here equal to new we can now go ahead and now create our form so in creating our form maybe on top here let's have our container i hope you know this bootstrap class you know how it works right we are creating a container so with this class then there's going to be a container. We have our row. Then maybe we're going to have our column MD12. Let's make it MD12 full container since we have it as container here. Then let's have this as a card. So we use card for this. And the last one, now in the card header, we want to specify the form over there. Okay, so let's do the card header. That is this header. Okay, now in here, let's find that. And we need a button or we need just a form. So let's put the form in there. So I'll just copy this and that is a form. We are having this edit form and at the model here is this person. Remember that this is a person that we've created, this person object. And we have a method that is on submit, so add person. And now we have this feature here. I explained it in the last video. As soon as you do this, it in, if enabled, form submission is performed without fully reloading the page. Okay, so we have to have a method for this when this button is clicked. The button type here it is submit, as you know, and here we call it at save. We are accepting name and now input date. Okay. Now for us to be able to handle the date separately, we need to create a, um, a variable to handle this date. So down here, we can just come in and now create a date and now set it to selected date. Okay, so maybe we're asking yourself that this model has a date um, property here. Why wouldn't we set it straight forward, but rather setting it up over here? Now we see that when you check this input date, this is bind value. 
So this band value here, we are setting it to date in here. Now we are not working with database actually. That's an in-memory storage. So we want to handle the date outside so we can skip some errors. All right, so when we get there, maybe I'll show you um, the reason why I created a date uh, property over here to handle that. Now, let's see. So once you have this set, we let's have our add person method. You can just copy this and now down here, let's have our void or it could be an async task. So add person. Okay. Now, initially, since we are, we are currently, we are doing the, um, the addition, we are adding data or adding record to the data. That's the database that we have. We can specify an attribute known as supply from form. We can put it on top to make it aware that it's going to accept data only from this edit form. Okay. Now we put it on top here and now we have this add. So for us to be able to add this, you know, when you copy this and I'll say that this person's queryable dot, we are not having this ad here. Okay, you're not having this ad. So what we can do here is in order to have this set and populated, we are going to create a list. And this list is going to be static list. And that is what this is going to depend on. So this is going to be the base list whereby this person's queryable is going to depend on this base list to populate its data. So we have this. Now what we can do here is let's now add the person to the list. So here, let's say this is add. Then we are checking if person.name is null or we can use string dot um, is null or empty. So if it is not then return else we want to generate an ID because you know they're just uh, in memory. So we need to specify an ID for ourselves. And we say that get a count of the list and I'll add one to it. That will be the ID. Aside from that, add it and now clear the container. Okay. So that's what we are doing. Now let's go in here and I loop through this and specify our edit or quick grade. In the normal sense, you're supposed to create table, isn't it? But quick grade is going to do all the stuff for us. Okay. So don't worry. Now we have this as a card header. Let's see. This is a card header. Now down here, we can specify card body. So class. Okay, then let's say this is card body. Then in here, let's put in our edit form. So let me just go in there and I'll grab the edit form. Is it edit form or quick grid? I like the quick grid. So let me paste the quick grid in here for us to see. Okay. Now this all the quick grid I'm talking about. You can see that for, for now, let's remove the pagination. We talk about the pagination later on. And also maybe the search property. We talk about that later on too. And that's all. Okay, let's also remove this template. We also talk about that. In order not to confuse you now, let's do it step by step. Okay. Now we have this quick grid, but it has an error control period. It has to use this Microsoft ESP.NET call dot quick grid. That's the, the namespace. So control period, this one. Okay. Now we see it has an item and it needs I creable the interface of for this model. So we see we pass in the, the item that we, we, we created and that's a person's creable. Remember that that is what we created in here. So initially when the page loads, it is empty because we are assigned to an empty one. So it is empty. We need to specify some columns. How many columns do we have here? We have um, three columns. Uh, yes, property, isn't it? But here it's going to be columns. So we have ID, name, and now birth date. But here you can see we are calling one property here. That is a um, age in years. We want to populate the years. Now, this is going to be an additional column that we want to generate in addition to the three columns that we have. It tells you that with a quick grade, it tells you that with a quick grade, you can specify or you can create an external column. It then necessarily means that the number of property that you have here must be equivalent to the property columns. No, you can add multiple ones so far as you know what you're doing with it, right? 
So here we're going to call a method and now we're going to pass in the date. You want to compete and check the, the date or the year of that specific person. Okay. Now you see, we definitely, we are making a sortable to what you threw. So you want to sort it. We, we set it through so we can arrange them in ascending or descending other. You can also specify alignment. So if you want to align to the middle, as you can see, we have alignment is equal to, so you can have align. Then you set up to the align, the kind of align that you want to um, have it. So dot start, we have end, left, center, and etc. Okay, you can specify it in here as well. Okay, now let's see with this compute method, what can it do or what it's going to do? We can, we're going to just subtract the current year or the date of the year of birth from this current year, right? And it's very simple. So just one line of code. Is going to um, do that for us and that is it so get the person's age let's put it down here so that is this method and uh, it will give you the current year of that person and what we need here is supply the birth date and like you see we are subtracting uh, the birth date year from um, current year to get the actual date of birth not the, the number of years not the date of birth sorry for that Okay, so it is going to, you can see it is solved now. Now, when we run this, let's see what we have. But as soon as we add, okay, although we are adding it to the list, but we are not using the list here to set it to these items. We are using this different item container here, which is empty uh, for default. So what you need to do here is we have to have a way so that as soon as we add this to the list, we can convert it into this scrapable container so it can be displayed inside this quick grid. So as I speak, you can see that when we add a new person, it's going to be added to this person's list because this is the list of content that we have here. So we can, now we have this list, we can look through this list and now add the item to this as queryable individually. So let's create a method in here and let's say that um, this is low data from the list or to the queryable container okay so let me just from the list to you now as you can see we have convert list to the queryable so convert it to this container and now in here this is what we can do you know there are several ways to do this okay this is also one now we are checking if the list here is null then return or in case it is not then we are looping through this list then we are arranging it in the in the other by that is ascending other from ID section and we create queryable that's a person's queryable is equal to queryable person's queryable dot concat then we add a new of this so the current loop or the current model that we have in here we specify it here and I'll add it to this list so in this way we can populate the whole list from this um, person's list into this person's queryable container okay now what you have to do here is to call this method as soon as the page loads so here let me put this down here that is when page initializes we are calling this method so we check if the list here it is null it's going to return so if user has not been added or if person has not been added it is going to return now it won't just go through this but as soon as this has more than zero entity in it, then when the page loads or when they get back to the page, it's going to call this method and I'll get it populated. Let's save this and now let's let's see. Now after adding this, okay, we have to also call the same method again here. So we can call this method to get us the current data that we need. Okay, so let's see. Let's run this and check it out. Okay, so there's the output. Uh, it's not nice at all. Let's check. Maybe we made some a mistake in it. All right. So you can see here's supposed to be column MD12, not 2. Now let's check it out again. Maybe let's try to refresh and see. All right, so the app is ready. Now let's see, let's pass in test and see. So this is netcode. Now let's see the date. So 2022. 
Now, if I click on add, you can see I have the data being added, isn't it? Good. Now, let's add the next one and see. So, there's going to be test one. So, now that you've seen this is working, let's talk about template column. So, let's see if you can customize the column here. And maybe you want to add some buttons, edit or delete button as well. So each of the record here, you want to associate it to that button so we can edit it or delete it as well. And we can do that by using the template column. So maybe let's close this. And now in here, you can specify that here, that is a template column. So this is going to be the title that you want to. We have two buttons in here. And the first one is an edit. And we can pass in the contest. So the contest here it is a current model that is in here. That, that is um, being looped or used um, per the column, uh, the property column in here. So if this is the first of the ID one, this is going to be the correspondent name um, and birth date. And now when you pass in the contest, it means we are passing in the current one that we have in into this method. So we have to create an instance of this person's object so we can re receive or retrieve the payload coming in from this method. And as an edit, we have delete. Okay, now let's come down here and now we're going to handle it. So we can just grab and let's have this. So void, then it's going to be an edit and it needs a person model and we say this is model. And maybe we can do same to the other one that is a delete. So void and that is delete. It needs a person model. That's for the payload and we say this model. Okay. So that is a way to add a template column to it. Now when we run this too, let's see what we have. Okay. So now let's add and see. So we add net code and now we maintain the date. Click on enter. Now you see we have this edit and now delete. But if I click on it, nothing happened because you haven't created any event wired up to this, um, any method wired up to this event. Okay, so let's close this and I'll come back to the method. Let's first handle the delete. So if I click on delete, what should happen? Now that we are receiving this model, what we can do here is to remove it from the list that we have. And we can do that from with just two line of codes. So here we are checking this is a person's list and it is just a list that we have set in here as you can see person's list. So we are um, checking or uh, looking for the ID. If the ID is equal to the person model coming in dot ID, then I want to remove that. After we move from this list, you know this um, list, this iCreable list here, it is bound to the quick grid. So we must have a way to refresh that. Now, you know, this person's queryable um, container here depends on this list. Now this list has um, one of eight children has been removed, but this still contains the whole children. So what can we do? We want to clear this list and now loop through this again and now add it to this list. So we can have the current list of this person's into this queryable container, okay? Maybe there's another way to do that. There are several ways to do it, but this what um, I have chosen to do it, um, do it with. Okay. Now let's see. So to do that, um, we're going to be calling this method several times. So it's it's better that we create maybe something like a method for that. So clear container and I reload. Maybe that's going to be the name of that method. So clear container and reload it. So clear container from here. And I reload this and I have named it as get data again. So you can see we are setting this to empty. Then we call this method. Remember that this method is looping to the list and now it is adding it. So when you check here, there is a method. It is looping to this list and I just added it to this cable container. Okay, good. So that's what we have now. Now let's save this and let's see. So after, let's check something here. So we have to call this get data or get data again. Let's call this method after we delete. So after deleting, call this method. 
to get us the current content or current um, record that we have in the list. Now let's run this. So let's start adding some data here and I'll still maintain the netcode hub. So netcode hub and let's maintain. Maybe let's change it to, so save it. Now we have it saved. As you can see, the date did not change. Do you see that? Let's, let's check that one out first. So you know, when you go to the top here, you see we, we created a variable here as date only. That is selected date. And that is what we bound to this input select. We check here, we bound to this. Now we are not setting the value of the, the property date or birth date in this person's model to the response of this or the result. So as soon as I click on add, I want to check this. So let's say this is going to be the percent on top here. Percent dot birth date is equal to, now let's call the selected date. And that is the selected date I'm talking about. Okay. Now let's save this. Let's reload. Let's start adding. So the same net code. Then here, yeah, 1995. Okay, so if I click on save, I must have it here. We can add another one. So this net and 1996. One, one, I must have that. But here we have an error here. As soon as we try to add second one to it, maybe let's move on. We're going to handle that later on. I think we have to solve it first before we move on, isn't it? Yeah, that's it's a good idea. So let's go to the source and check. Now it's coming from when adding. So when you add a person, I think this is going to give us a problem. So convert list to queryable. Now we see here that when you check this, it is not clearing the container. The container has it already and now you want to assign it to another instance. So you see we have this, the same container. I want to concat with the current one that is coming from this list. So this is going to have a problem with that. Now this is what we're going to do. Let's first clear the container first. So instead of calling this method, this method is found in this method, right? So let's copy this instead. And now let's replace it with this. This is going to solve the problem. Let's save it. Let's do it again. So let's try it out in netcode. So save let's another one so net now 1996 save and as you can see we have it here we can add another one here so that's three and this is going to be 2000 save and as you can see we have it now if i click on delete see what's going to happen click on delete and nothing happens here isn't it let's find out and see so let's put a breakpoint to the delete method and now see so this is the delete method if I put a breakpoint here, now let's click on this. So delete this. And the breakpoint is hit. Now that is the model coming in here. And as you can see, we have the ID of two. So if I click on step down, it is going to check. And now it is checking again. So what is the current list that we have? We have only, let's find out three count now so we're going to call this model again so here is going to want to check here is going to clear the container and now call this method now this method too is going to look through the uh, list that we have as count as three and add them to this queryable container okay so let's let's move on and see if this is actually being removed we have click on next so the current items here, it is what? We have three. Okay. Now I discount this method. So we continue on. Let's click on one. So we have three here. So it means that there is something going on here that suppose 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 we move it and now we must have the response as two. Let's see. But I still have the three. 
it means okay so here instead of this person we must replace this with model so now let's stop this and now instead of this person it must be model so equal to this model um, dot person id okay so this is a person but we can just make here as incoming so you can you understand it too well so incoming person or incoming model okay anyone so let's copy this now let's paste it here that's right this is going to end the issue let's run it again now i want to remove the breakpoints here because it's going to work let's add it so net code now i want to add one and let's delete it and we say this off let's another one so net one nine nine six okay so now let's add it is over here and as soon as i click on delete you can see it is off go here and i come back and you can see it is off right now let's see the next one so let me add maybe net code hub and now here let's maintain it now if i click on counter and i return you can see it it will still be there but as soon as i click on delete you can see it has been removed from the list all right so there's a delete is working now let's have a look with the edit how do you implement the edit so we can have the the record filled up here and we make a changes and it gets updated in here so if I click on the edits, we have the method implemented over here already. So this is what we're going to have. We are going to get this selected date. You know, this selected date is what I've been bound to the input element. That, that is the input date. And if I click on edit, we are receiving this model. Okay. So I like to use incoming model. Oh, no. So let me copy this again. Okay, so that's the incoming model. And now we are setting this selected date to this incoming model. So let's retrieve the date here. And now the rest we are going to assign because say we have only date of birth. We have date of birth, right? So here we have the selected date is equal to this incoming model. And we have this date person here is assigned to the incoming one because here we have only ID and uh, we have the the name okay the data has been added already here okay so as soon as we click on that it's going to get fed up with this model remember that this is the one that we use for the edit form this person so when you check this it is the one that we use for this edit form so automatically it's going to fill up here and as soon as we've we've set the value for this selected date it's also going to change save this and now let's reload this page All right, so let's pass in store net code. Now add it. Now if I if I click on this, maybe let's add another one to test. And this is net. And maybe the year I'm going to make it 195. Okay, so add this one. Now I'm going to click on the year of 2000, and now this has to change, and this also has to change. Click on edit. Now we see that's changed, and this has also changed. Now, if I click, if I update it, check this to 2002, and I click on save, what should happen? We have to, or it has to be able to update and now, so we can see the current values in here, isn't it? So let's have a look with that too. So let's close this. So you know that it is the same add person method that's going to handle both the add and now the update, isn't it? So we're going to check if the ID of the incoming here, it is more than zero. So we can just make a search. Uh, that's a, a checkup. So let's use this to check it up. Now here, you want to check if the person ID it is greater than zero. If it is, because this is the person that we are talking about, that's the object. This, you know, as soon as I click on edit, see here, if I click on edit, I have this the incoming one, then I'm going to set the object, the value of this to this, and I'll set the selected date to 
the incoming um that is this the date that is we have in there okay so whilst we have this pressing object here it contains the current value so we can retrieve it from here and now we are checking if that person's id is greater than zero it means you want to update if so then make a search from the list that we have and now um get with the specific id in case we find it then remove it as you can see we cache it here remove that one and now add a new one so add the current one that have been stored in there so we add it to this we clear the container and now we call this method get data again then we return so this method is going to reload the whole page we see it is claiming the content as empty then it's going to call this method which will then loop to the list that we have as i speak the list will be short minus one because we have removed one from it so we're going to remove we're going to just loop through that and here and now assign it to this okay and that's all that we need to do and in case it is so here there's an update you can just change this to update so i use a return key here so as soon as it gets here it it will not cross this side it gets here and it has to return up there and here will be the add so just going to add okay then that is so here we're not going to change anything it's going to maintain as you did or really the other time okay so that is it now let's save this and let's try to run this and see whether it is going to be updated or it is not okay so let's try this out our passing net code as usual then so let's save that if i click on edit let's add another one here so net and now let's say this is 2005 so now let's edit the first one net code so click on edit we have this and as soon as i decide to add let's say this 2002 so let's make it 2012 okay now let's save this and this could not be saved you can see we have it here we have 2002 here if i click on this we have 2002 so it means it did not save let's put a breakpoint and i'll check it up so we have this person if that is greater than zero then you want to make a search from this and search if we have it then remove the current one from the list and i'll add the the, the current one that is the old one that we have Clear the content and I call this method and return. That is an update. And now with this, after doing this, let's also return this and this add. So let's put a breakpoint here. Now let's go to the page. Let's click on edit. So let's set the name to net one and let's click on save and see the breakpoint is hit. Now when we check this person, let's see the values in here. So we have the selected date and this, the model here, we have the date in the 2005 frame because we have the name and, and the ID. Now we check, is the ID greater than zero? Yes, it is. So let's step in. Okay, so next, now we check. All right, so let's move on. Okay, now we check. So here, we are just checking up. Now let's see, yeah, it is found. So it's going to remove, this remove, and now it has to add the current one. Yeah, so it is adding. After adding, get this. Let's do it again. Okay. So now call this method to clear the container and now get the whole up again. Okay, so click on continue. And I believe this is supposed to work. Let's see what we have in here. All right, so you can see that it was it was updated, but the day did not update. And I'm thinking of it is because of this here we are returning. We are not setting this. So we can move this date. Let's move it on top here. So we can use it for all now let's try this again okay so we have to first add something in here let's add one more
Okay, so let's edit the first one, 2002. Let's change this to 1995. Now we change this to Netcode 1. Click on Save. And now we see that's changed, right? Let, let's edit this as well. Click on Edit, 2006. We change this to 2016. And now this, let's add an 10. Click on Save. And you can see that's also changed. So the, the edit is also working. Now let's have a look at the last one. That is a set. So if I want to set this, is it possible? Now for the sorting, you see I can sort it over here. So let's implement the set and also the pagination. And that will be all. Alright, so let's close this. Now in here, when we check the page, we want to apply the search to a specific column. And we want the column of name. So this one. So we want to, we're going to remove this name column let's remove it and i replace it with this we have a property column so we're using the template column options then we pass in a search box so we're going to use an input search box now this auto focus and now when it is unchanged you want to call this method then we have a placeholder in here so let's have a method here which is going to retrieve the value that we pass in so from that set we can specify a property or a uh, method so let's go to the down here and we're gonna have the method here maybe the last part and this will be the search okay so when you look at this we have we can just set let's clear this for now and we can remove it here Okay, now let me check this. We are checking the value coming in. You know, we are using change event acts, and now this has a value. So we convert it to string, and I will check if it is not empty. Then you want to loop to the list, and I'll check the name section or the name column, which contains the value that the user has passed in. We want to skip this um, um, ignore case. So whether it's going to be uppercase or lowercase, you want to skip that. Now we check if there is results here if the count it is equal to zero it means it couldn't find anything we want to return it but in case it is found or it found something then we check in if results dot any then we're going to loop to that result and now also set it up to this but before we set up to this queryable um uh, container here we have to clear it because you want to hold the current result from the set so we look through this we look through this over here and now we set it into this Scrabble container by using this concat then we, that is all when we are done at the end of the day you see we are checking this in case this is null then call this you know what do you know what this method is going to do it's going to clear the container and also load the default list let's see get data again and um that is this it's going to clear the container and I'll call this method whereby this method is going to load the default and I'll loop through and I'll set it so that's all it's going to do here okay it's very simple we just what the key here it is we're making a search from the list then we check if it is not equal to now we're going to loop through it and now we add it to this scrabble container whilst adding to this we have to make sure that the container is empty so we clear the content in here before we do that in case it is now, then get the whole data and I'll fill the, the table with it. Okay, let's try this up and see what we have. So we're going to add, let's add something here like uh, net code. Okay, so we have this. Now you can see we have this um, ellipsis over here. If I click on this, you could say I have this search box. Have you seen? Let's add another one here and I'll make it as um, netcode hub. Now let's add this. We have two. Now if I click on this to search, let's search for net. And now if I click on this enter, we have the two. But let's see. Let's add one more. Let's make something like. This is hues. Let's add this. And now let's click on this and I'll search for hues and see what we're going to have. 
you can see now we have the response we have the search result over here if i click on this again and now um let's search for a net code so you can see we have the net code in here so the search is also working now the last part here is going to be the uh, pagination isn't it let's have a look so we're going to have a pagination binet here let's go close this and quickly we do that and that will be the end for this video so let's have a look now the first thing that we need to do here is we have to declare this pagination and let's put this down here okay so this is supposed to be here let me cut this okay so pagination let's put on top here and the item count here we're going to use maybe three for now three items per page now once you're done with this what we need to do next is to call this um the pagination so that the page or this can get the content that you want to see now so we add the whole list to this um creable container so we can do that by using this one line of code to handle that and here we're going to use status change um as well so it gets refreshed and you know when you check it down here we are calling this method at the time we call this method get convert list to queryable as you can see that is a method in here let's find out that method that is a method so anytime we're going to look through this right and add it all the time we call this method because when you check this this method is also called in here so this is what we can do after looping through it and our setting it up over here we paste in this one line of code in here to handle the total item count to us by adding or calling this state has changed so this is going to get the page refreshed so we can have the various items per page okay now this is coming from the instance that we created from the top here okay now once you're done let's copy this instance and now here quick great item pass the pagination here and pass it like this so once you're done with this the last thing i need to do here is to add the paginator so that's going to divide the sections for us and you can see we have card body so i want to have a card footer so that is a card class and this is card footer and in here let's paste in this so i just have to and paste this one here so we have a paginator and then the state is the pagination there's an instance of the um, pagination state that we've created and that is what we've assigned to this quick grid okay so when it gets the values here we have um this state has changed to get it to refresh so we can have the various sessions and i'm going to utilize it by having the item size that we have specified down is it down the no, top here so there's an item size and we said we want item per page equal to three it's very simple configuration is very simple and that's all now let's run this and let's see so let's take this out first and we're going to have n1 then let's see let's add this now we have n2 let's have we see now we have page one out of one let's add n3 now you can see we have one out of three now the last one you're going to move to the next page so n4 now you see it has moved to the next page and if i click on this you see i am into the next page and i have this i can also edit this so n40 save it i can edit it i can also delete that and i can also make a search n1 i can make a search in here and i'll get the content as well all right so that is it i believe using quick grade is very simple and easy as well i'll put this video at the github so please check the de description i'll leave the link over there as i said earlier on if you're interested in learning blazer or .NET technologies blazer and also mari and mari blazer hybrid and also web service for web api uh, let me know put it at the comment section there or you can even write me through the mail that i have specified beneath Thank you so much for watching this video and I'm going to catch you up in the next video.